I write my messages weeks in advance. Some people struggle with planning and preparation. Uh, they place more value on a spontaneous word, like somehow a, a lack of planning makes you more spiritual. Uh, that's a short-sighted view of God because I believe the Lord knows right now what we'll need eight months from now. Nothing catches God by surprise. We really saw that in action in 2020. Months before the pandemic began, we felt directed by God to spend a whole year studying his promises. And week after week, the promise we studied perfectly fit with what was going on in our world. The Holy Spirit, through what's called the gifts of the Spirit, directed us. He knew what we needed before we knew what we needed. In the New Testament era, Paul wrote letters that were then read aloud in the different churches. Everyone learned together as the Lord spoke through letters Paul had written weeks and months earlier because they didn't have FedEx. Now, I'm not against or criticizing the modern church model. There's a lot of good things with it, but our choice is to follow the New Testament pattern, believing the Lord directs and orders each step of the process, including the writing. I believe the Lord directs our process, but there's still moments when the Lord leads us to change. That happens often in our services. That's why most weeks, each of the four services is different. You don't know that because you're not in all four. I don't announce when that's happening. I don't say, hey, we had a plan, but we sent something different needed in this moment. I shouldn't have to announce it. Spiritually mature, sense and know when the Holy Spirit is moving and working. Those who aren't as far along are, are on as tuned in. Just know that their needs are being met. Our team is so good that most of the time, you don't even know when it's spontaneous. Mike has the words to the song, unexpected song on the screen before we finish the first line. Uh, Brad starts playing the song I'm singing and somehow we end up in the same key. The graphic, most of the time. The graphics team adjusts to what I'm saying. We've got an amazing team. But in this instance, it's rather obvious because I'll be saying stuff that isn't in your outline and not saying stuff that is. So in fact, if you've already taken your outline out, put it away. It'll be great later for a paper airplane that's a free piece of paper courtesy of your church that loves you. <laughs> but I believe the Lord has, has led me in a different direction. Every word from the Lord is subject to evaluation and confirmation. I'm accountable. The, this word was confirmed through Pastor Parker, Pastor Brian, and Pastor Gary Wheat, another pastor in our staff who I called and talked with. Very importantly, what I want to share with you tonight, this word from God is consistent with the highest standard, the Bible, the written word of God. Everything's got to line up here. So all that said, if you believe I miss God with what I share, I'll listen to your concern. Uh, I'm not only accountable, I'm also evaluated. Every Monday, our meetings start with an evaluation of my message from the, the day before. We discuss what I did well, what I could have done better. I receive correction from spiritual leaders. I believe in and practice evaluation and accountability because I believe in the scriptural principle of spiritual authority. Okay? So just to give you a little context, now here we go. 2020 was difficult. When COVID hit, people were forced to isolate from others. Isolation feeds depression, addiction, all kinds of mental health issues. Isolation's un unhealthy for a follower of Jesus. We are designed to be a body, the body of Christ functioning in community, meeting together. At the beginning of the pandemic, uh, many of the so-called experts predicted this would be the next great spiritual awakening in America. They prophesied that as soon as churches reopened, people would flock to church, fill the seats, and thousands would come to faith. That didn't happen. Instead of a great awakening, we've seen a great falling away, and one-third of Christians in America have completely abandoned the church. One-third. We all begin to point to 2021 as a new beginning. We couldn't wait for 2020 to be over and for the pressure to let up. Near the end of 2020, we had a very divisive election. People are angry, tense, 
in some cases even violent, the pressure in America increased. While still in office, President Trump led the charge to develop a vaccine in record time. Many believed that would lead to normal life and peace in our country, and that wasn't the case. I, I never thought it was possible, but 2021 has been worse than 2020. People are angry, offended, often irrational. Anger over vaccines, uh, mandates, politics, and a, a host of other issues has led to even more division in the country, and the pressure in America increased. I've watched marriages end over vaccine disagreements. I've seen long-term friendships fracture over political opinions. And then about the start of summer, there came a new strain of COVID, the Delta variant. Wasn't that a blessing? Case numbers went up. People who felt safe before were suddenly afraid again, and the pressure in America increased. Inflation hit. Groceries, gas, you name it, everything cost more than it did a year ago. The pressure in America increased again. Even as life has gotten more expensive, millions of people quit their jobs. We are in the middle of what's being called the Great Resignation. Businesses are shorthand, jobs go unfilled, and the pressure in America has increased. The news media fans the flames of panic because more people watch bad news and controversy. If they just show good news and happy stuff, nobody will watch. And the pressure in America increased. I, I want to help you understand something. News stations make money by selling commercials. So the more angry people are, the more they watch. And the more people watch, the more they can charge for commercials. They're not trying to report the news. They're trying to get you to keep watching. Mental illness and mental health issues have dramatically increased. Domestic violence is on the rise. Addictions are growing. The pressure in America is increasing. Sadly, the church has not been immune. I've watched people leave churches they've attended for years, even decades, over opinions, not essentials. How the church does things seems to matter more than why we exist. Rather than rally around the cross and the love of Jesus, the church has divided over opinions. Sadly, I've watched church people attack other believers on social media, destroying their witness. I've talked to a number of pastors who decided to leave their church and leave the ministry. The endless criticism and attacks and people are leaving are more than they can take. Lifeway Research said by July of 2020, pastors' greatest pain point had become maintaining unity within their church. As the church navigated safety concerns, member their, members of their congregation voiced differing opinions loudly, often, often reflecting the political leaders they listened to. And tired and worn out, they walk away from God's call. I understand. When I became pastor, I signed up for advice and input and correction and criticism. I knew that was part of the deal. I signed up for this. People have a lot of ideas and expectations about church, what should be done, how it should be done. In a church like ours, with people from different faith backgrounds and traditions, there are even more opinions. It's pretty awesome. I listen to comments, input, complaints, and evaluations weekly. That's not a favorite part of my job, but it's part of the job, and I get that. I want to hear from you. I welcome feedback because feedback is how we improve. So I listen. But in this season, it's been different. People under extreme pressure say and act in ways I've never before experienced. It's a little embarrassing uh, to admit, but I'm, I'm to the point where I cringe when I hear the email tone because I wonder who's angry now. I've watched church leaders Good people walk away from marriages and destroy cherished friendships, seemingly without any warning signs. I've watched key church members and leaders spiral into discouragement and depression. Many have walked away completely. Here in our church, I've watched people I love vanish. I can't count how many people have said, Pastor Rod, do you think we're living in the last days? I'm so afraid. I've been watching, I've been praying. 
Many of you are struggling with the increased pressure. This week, one of my friends posted on social media, and all his post said was, I'd give all my material possessions to lose my anxiety. And in the comments, many agreed. I'm not a superhero. I felt it too. There are times the pressure is almost overwhelming. There are times I feel anxious and uptight and don't know why. Our staff's struggling. You're struggling. I've been praying that God would reveal to me how to address it, what we need to do, what the answer is. We need to hear from the Lord. If the church is going to survive persecution and pressure, and there's more of that coming, that's, that's not because I'm a prophet. It's because Jesus said it would happen. So if we're going to learn, we've, we've got we've to do something. We've got to figure out how to grow, continue to grow in faith and withstand difficulty and hardship. Monday this week, I got an email from a friend that started with these words. A spirit of heaviness. It's as if the whole world rests on your shoulders. It seems especially daunting in the middle of the night. I read that and my heart jumped. And I realized that's it. That's what's happening to you and to me. This is not a natural battle. This is a spiritual battle. And I believe we are fighting a spirit of heaviness. Here's how I define the spirit of heaviness. This is just my definition. You can add your own. It's the feeling that something is wrong, but you're not exactly sure what. It's a sense of burden and pressure. It's when you're overwhelmed, but, but you're not sure, sure why. It's one day you feel great, and then the next day you feel like giving up on the world. And without anything changing, you've gone from the highest high to the lowest low. It's anxiety, discouragement, depression, a feeling of not being in tr- control. People react to that heaviness in, in predictable and unhealthy ways. They feel like they have to do something, anything. Because life feels out of control, they try to control whatever they can. That's why they leave churches, marriages, friendships, jobs. It's that desire to feel in control in at least one area of their life. They lash out in anger at whatever target is most convenient and Importantly, whatever target is least likely to fight back. So parents, spouse, kids, pastors, other believers are common targets. Hurting people hurt people. Uh, Under pressure, with that heaviness, they isolate. They drop out of church. They drop out of ministry. They drop out of friendships. They don't know how to explain the heaviness they feel, and they can't imagine that anyone else is feeling that way, so they just suffer through it alone. They turn to addictive behaviors. Drugs, alcohol, and pornography, that's the big three. They're the most common, but it can be exercise. It can be working out. It can be eating. It can be video games. It can be a lot of different things. They're turning to whatever helps them escape that feeling of heaviness, even if it's only for a little while. With that heaviness and that pressure, they get offended. And often they resurface an offense from long ago. They think about it. They think about it some more because when you're in isolation, you have a lot of time to just think about stuff. And as they focus on it, it grows and it becomes a really big deal to them. Something that was momentary becomes monumental. Satan tries to put a lot of things on you. Our world tries to put a lot on you. Doubt, fear, anxiety, depression, discouragement, dread. A lot of those pressures are real. I get that. But listen to me. The spirit of heaviness is not from God. I want you to look at the words of Jesus in Matthew 11. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and burdened, everyone who feels anxious, everyone who's uncertain, everyone who's fighting a spirit of heaviness, come to me. And when you do, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Would you say those words with me? Rest for your souls. And Jesus said, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
The spirit of heaviness can lead to poor decisions as you attempt to somehow change your circumstances and manage your feelings. So let me give you a few things not to do. If you had an outline, these would be in your outline. But here's a few things not to do when you're fighting the spirit of heaviness. Don't make permanent decisions based on a temporary emotion. Don't leave your church. Don't divorce your spouse. Don't move away. Don't quit your job without another job lined up. Don't say or post things in anger that you'll never be able to take back. Don't quit your ministry assignment. Don't doubt God's call. And very important, don't trust your emotions because your emotions will lie to you. Your emotions will make you do all kinds of stupid things. I mean, you, many of you, you've got stories, right? Yeah, you did. You did a lot of dumb things based on emotion of the moment. Some of you married some dumb people based on emotion of the moment. Can I get an amen? As long as you're not sitting next to them. So what do you do in the season of heaviness? Here's how the email from my friend ended. Isaiah describes Jesus' commission from his father to exchange the spirit of heaviness for a garment of praise. His promise includes you. He will take away your spirit of heaviness and give you instead a garment of praise. So begin to praise the Lord. And as you do, the heaviness in your heart will give way to the power of praise. The passage my friend referred to is found in Isaiah chapter 61. I want to read it to you. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to preserve those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning. And here it is, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So the picture is you take off the spirit of heaviness and you put on the garment of praise that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Okay, that's all preparatory. And that all brings me to what I sense God wants to say to us today. Um, now listen to me, and if you grew up in church, especially in a Pentecostal church, um, you grew up, and if somebody said, thus saith the Lord, you weren't allowed to argue. And so a lot of times people would add a thus saith the Lord to their angry opinions so they could ascribe their opinions to God. That's abuse, and that's manipulation. So like everything else, I'm open to evaluation and, and uh, correction. But I believe this is God's word for you today and his word for the church in America. And as I sensed the Lord just giving it to me, I just started, I just started typing it. And there's no specific way that, that the Lord speaks to us. He speaks to us through a lot of ways. It happens, happened to me. I just decided I'd type because I don't trust my memory and because we have four services and I won't remember what I said by the time I get the third service. Here's what I sense the Lord saying to us today. It's time to put off the spirit of heaviness. I'm the Lord your God. I've called you to be difference makers who are filled with joy and peace. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me. Take off the spirit of heaviness and put on a garment of praise. I'm ready to deliver, to deliver you and set you free to live the life I've called you to live, life abundant and free and filled with my glory. So worship me in spite of your heaviness. Praise me through your fear. I want to change you before I change your circumstances. Do not allow the enemy to dictate your attitude or your actions. It is time to shine my light and share my love. I promise that in the last days, I would pour out my spirit on all flesh. I'm ready to do that, so get ready to receive. That's what I believe the Lord would say to us. And I want to read it to you again, because I know that was kind of quick. Because I, I, I want you to, 
hear and listen to this in your own spirit. It's time to put off the spirit of heaviness. I'm the Lord your God. I've called you to be difference makers who are filled with joy and peace. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to me. Take off the spirit of heaviness and put on a garment of praise. I'm ready to to deliver you and set you free to live the life I've called you to live, life abundant and free and filled with my glory. Worship me in spite of your heaviness. Praise me through your fear. I want to change you before I change your circumstances. Do not allow the enemy to dictate your attitude, your actions. It is time to shine my light and share my love. I promised in the last days I would pour out my spirit on all flesh. I'm ready to do that so you get ready to receive. See, we shouldn't fear the end times. We should be excited because God promised he'd pour out his spirit in a new, fresh way. So that's what we want, and that's what we've been praying for. Instead, we're we're running around like the sky is falling with our hair on fire. What's going to happen to us? Are we going to make it? Are we going to survive? Yeah, we do. And then we go to heaven. So how do you take off the spirit of heaviness? As I've studied and prayed, I think there are two important steps we can take. Number one, these are going to be easy to remember. Number one, reach up. See, when you feel heavy, when you've isolated and then you isolate long enough and you stay there, when you feel heavy, worship is not normal or natural. You don't feel like worshiping. You don't want to clap your hands. You don't want to raise your hands. You don't want to sing. You don't want to worship. You don't want to praise because you don't think you got anything to be thankful for. Listen, it may not be natural when you feel heavy to worship, but it's right. The scriptural way to escape the spirit of heaviness is to put on the garment of praise. The picture is to take off this heavy thing and put on worship. In just a moment, we're going to do that together. But I want you to know, you don't have to be at church to put on the garment of praise. You don't have to have Pastor Brad and Lucas and Mary Grace and Trace, Pastor Tracy in order to worship. You, let me give you some practical ways. Try this. Try thanking God every chance you get. When you're driving to work or you're driving to school, just start thanking him. Do it out loud. You say, what will people think? There's no one with you in your car. You sing into your hairbrush all the time. So talk to the Lord out loud. Say, Lord, I choose to worship you. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. I take off heaviness and I put on praise. I will walk into today worshiping you and thanking you because you're my God. When you feel the heaviness coming on, Change your position. Stand up at your desk. Bounce around a little. Take a walk. Find a place where you can just say it out loud. I worship you, Lord. I take off my heaviness and I put on worship. I choose worship today. My response to this thing I'm feeling is to thank you and to worship you. You say, well, I work around other people. They might like it too. Change your words. Instead of complaining and focusing on what's wrong, focus on what's right. Turn off the news station and turn on the Spirit of God and watch that something begins to change inside of you when you do that. Be grateful and and say it. Put on good worship music and sing. It doesn't matter if you have a good voice. God doesn't care. It's not a singing competition. Pastor Brad and I talk about, we worry sometimes that the stuff's too good. And so you think you've got to be good in order to worship. You don't. You just worship. You're replacing the spirit of heaviness with the spirit of peace and joy. When we worship together, when we do come to church and worship together, I challenge you, do something you've never done before. If you usually sit, take the big risk and stand up. If you usually just stand and watch, open your mouth and sing. Even if you've never done it before, lift your hands and worship the Lord. You can bounce a little, dance, 
You say, I've never danced. People laugh at me. So you're taking off a spirit of heaviness and you're putting on a garment of praise. Shout hallelujah or shout thank you, Jesus. And you'd say, what are people going to think? Who cares what they think? You're taking off heaviness and you're putting on a garment of praise. And according to scripture, when you do that, it's not the things around you that change. You change. You change because that heaviness is lifted and that heaviness is gone. So, I, I mean, is what I'm saying resonating with you? Is anybody, has anybody been, has anybody just been feeling that heaviness? I mean, have you sensed that? Then put on praise. Put on worship. Thank the Lord. Worship our Lord. We take off heaviness right now. We've allowed it too long. We've allowed Satan. We've allowed the world. We've allowed people around us to to put something on us that doesn't fit, that doesn't feel good, that isn't right, and isn't from you. And so right now, Lord, we take it off, almost like taking off a winter coat. (laughs) We take it off. And instead, we pick up and put on something that's light and free. We put on the spirit of praise. Lord, I pray for people who are just overcome with the heaviness and the anxiety and the overwhelming and the fear. Right now, as we put on the spirit of praise, let something change in them. We take step one right now and we reach up to you. We reach up to our God in worship. Come on, let's just do that. Let's worship together in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Like the fragrance after the rain Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Let all heaven and earth proclaim Let's sing this. Come on. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. Oh, yes. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim. In the light of his glory and grace. Now just say this with me. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God, how great you are. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Great God. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. 
God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. Sing it one more time. Come on. My God, how great you are. How great, how great you are. How great you are. Going through a storm. He's moving. 
confess that here I am to worship here I am Lord here I am to bow here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely all together worthy all together wonderful to Jaira, you are enough. Jaira, you are enough. And I will be content in every circumstance. Jaira, you are enough.
So we come to you, Lord. We come to you and you, we thank you that in you we can find life and light and peace. Lord, I pray, we pray together today as a church family and we take off the spirit of heaviness and we replace it with a garment of praise. Oh, well, now we understand. We'll walk out this door and the world's gonna try to put it right back on us. Satan's gonna put it right back on us. Lord, help us every time that happens to out loud, intentionally, with purpose say, I choose worship as my response. I choose to put on the garment I praise. I take off that heaviness. I refuse to allow it to attach itself to me. Because God, you have a greater purpose and you have a greater plan. So we put off heaviness and we put on a spirit of praise in Jesus' name. Be seated for just a moment. Stay here, guys, because I'm right back to you. I had a whole lot of good things I was going to say about this next point. We'll say them some other time. Number one, reach out. Number two, reach out. Great example of that is found in 2 Corinthians 8. Here's what Paul wrote. Brothers, we want you to know about the grace God has given the Macedonian churches. Now, I want you to look at this. Out of the most severe trial, they argued, complained, abandoned each other, left church, and made angry Facebook posts. <laughs> no, out of their most severe trial, their overwhelming joy and extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify, they gave as much as they were able, even beyond their ability. They were under pressure, facing persecution and poverty, a heavy time. But rather than isolate and give up, rather than retreat into discouragement and despair, they reached out to others who were in need. Last year at the holiday season, we sensed the Lord leading us in a new direction. Instead of come and see, come to us, our traditions, was to go and share, and the results were beautiful. Just before we go, I want you to hear from someone who gave and someone who received. Watch this video. So my family's part of the deaf congregation here at First Assembly, as well as part of the deaf community here in the Little Rock area. And last year, like everyone else, we were a little disappointed when Christmas came about and you couldn't do the normal social things that you wanted to do. However, we decided to get involved. We helped fill the boxes for the community. And then when the time came, we picked up four boxes to take out to some people that we felt like God had touched our hearts to give to. So we got in the car, drove around, gave out the boxes. We weren't even home and we started getting messages from this single mom with a deaf daughter crying, weeping, telling us how much it meant to her and that not only was that food going to get them through all of December but possibly through January and her be able to pay her bills. So we've changed our viewpoint on Christmas now. We're not doing gifts that many amongst ourselves and our family and we're going to focus outward and we are super excited to get involved with giving out boxes this year for the families that need. Hi, I'm Steve Ellison. I found out I had cancer in uh, January of 2020. Once I found out I had cancer, I was able to work until March 17th, but I needed help buying medication. We needed help paying our phone bill. We needed help paying our normal utility bills. We didn't have anything extravagant. We just wanted help to be able to live and to have food and it was a true struggle. My wife and son were asleep at home, and I get a text, and oh, it's from Miss Christine. I got a friend that was wanting to bring you something. And I said, okay, and she said, are you awake? And I said, yes, ma'am. So about 10 minutes later, a car pulled in my driveway, and it was the Miss Christine Barnello that I know from a, a previous uh, carpet work that I've done for her, and a lady from a church, and she said, we are gifting people that need this food for at Christmas time, and Miss Christine said that you're in dire straits of needing food and help, and I said, yes, ma'am. So it was a true blessing. I felt like the Lord was standing beside me and helping me gather this food and these, and these blessings from the angels that showed up that night. Ooh. 
when you reach out, the light of Jesus shines through you. Isaiah 58, 10 says, if you feed those who are hungry, take care of the needs of those who are troubled, your light will shine in the darkness and you will be bright like sunshine at noon. And you fight that spirit of heaviness that makes you want to withdraw and isolate and sometimes lash out and, and do something. Instead, you say, I'm going to reach up to the Lord for strength and I'm going to reach out to others in love. And when you reach out to others in love, something changes in you. So there's a card in your bulletin that looks like this. And it talks about outrageous displays of generosity. All the stuff we're gonna do, all the opportunities you have to be able to help prepare gifts for the next uh, five Sundays, we'll be preparing gifts. And then when we're going to give out gifts. Here's, here's the goal. I want everyone in our church family to serve at least one time. Now, some of you are gonna wanna serve every time. That's fine, you're allowed to. There's not like a rule, you can only give out once. Uh, but I want everybody in our church family to just choose a time and do it once. You say, well, I can't get out. Uh, I'm stuck at home. I'm sick, I'm homebound. I just watch online. We still have a spot for you and you can pray while those are being given out. But I want everybody to be a part of reaching out. So I want you to fill out that card and then here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna finish with just another song uh, of worship, reaching up. And at the same time, we're gonna reach out. And while we're singing that, this is gonna be a big step for some of you. This is gonna be really different because you have to move, okay? Um, while we're singing that song, I want you to just come. I want you to lay the card here on the front of the stage, all right? So that's gonna be our way of doing it. I didn't know what we were gonna do. That's how we're gonna do it. And then we're just, we're just gonna go out worshiping and thanking God. Now, let me ask you something. Do you feel something change in you? Yeah. When we take off the spirit of heaviness, it's, it's not, we're gonna walk out there still gonna be all the same problems, but we're gonna change in those problems. Reach up and reach out. I wanna pray for you. Then we're gonna worship and bring those cards to the front. Lord, I pray for people in this room and people watching online who what I've described today is exactly what they're at and exactly what they're facing. Lord, I pray that they would resist the devil who's going to try to make them heavy and burdened again and that they would respond instead by reaching up to you in thanksgiving and worship and reaching out to others with love and compassion. And Lord, we're just gonna keep doing that. And every time we sense that heaviness, every time we sense that oppression, we're gonna reach up and reach out, reach up and reach out, reach up and reach out, getting strength and power from you and sharing love and compassion and grace with others. Work in us and through us. And Lord, I pray that we would bring light to a dark world and that we would bring with us uh, a joy and a peace. Lord, put other people with the spirit of heaviness in our path and allow us to share this word with them that they can be free as well. We worship you in Jesus' name.